Square pegs just don't belong in round holes. We gotta find a way to make this fit into the hole for this using nothing but that. And as simple as that idea seems to be, it's because we all learned it as a young child with, you know, our block sets, you know, with we had the round peg and the square hole and you try to put it in there. As simple as that is, it's amazing to me how many examples of this still exist today. Things like using a screwdriver as a pry bar or a knife as a screwdriver or a ratchet as a hammer. I think I speak for all of us when I say that we've been there. The same can be said when looking at the wheel wells of a certain brand of truck. I'm Dustin with the Custom Offsets, Dusty.co on Instagram, and today's video is all about how General Motors decided way back in the 70s to make it just a little bit more difficult for those of us who want to own a bow tie truck. We're comparing shape worse than a high school geometry class to find out, are square wheel wells really worth it? Before we dive into the bones of the video here, if this is your first time stopping by, then hey, welcome. Thanks for swinging by. We hope you guys like what you see. And you know, if you're looking to build your truck, then be sure to click on that subscribe button that you can find down below and keep up with all the things Custom Offsets. And if you happen to need a set of wheels and tires, be sure to check us out at customoffsets.com. Not only do we have a massive online gallery that you can search and see exactly what's gonna fit your truck, but we also have something like 40,000 freaking wheels and tires in our warehouse just waiting to be your new set. It's that simple. You guys can check it out at customassets.com. Also, if you have a Chevy truck in the square wheel wells, you know, was kind of your thing, drop a comment down below and let us know how big of a tire you stuffed in there and you know how bad it rubs since that's pretty much all square wheel wells are good for. I mean, I've been there. All right, into the video. For the first 50-ish years, Chevy seemed to have it all figured out. They started with their Chevy one-ton truck way back in 1918 and, you know, spanning all the way up into their second generation of CK pickup truck in 1972, General Motors had their wheel wells that were, for the most part, rather round, which makes a lot of sense considering the wheel and tire that you're putting in there is, it's round. In 1973, though, the world would change forever. Myrtle asked the cops how long he had to keep the beast chained up like a slave. He said until forever, forever. 73 really was a good year, by the way. The president at the time was Richard Nixon. The price of gasoline was 37 cents a gallon, which is cheaper than you can buy a banana at Quick Trip these days, and better yet, you could buy an average home in middle America for somewhere around $35,000. Times have definitely changed. But perhaps the biggest influential change to the truck world in 1973 was the introduction of the third generation CK line of pickup trucks, the one and only iconic Chevy square body Silverado. Iconically at the time of the introduction, the square body was actually referred to as the round line generation because it was the first generation to feature curved glass windows on the cab. Additionally, this generation of truck would be the first to offer a factory available dual rear wheeled pickup truck dubbed the Big Dooley, and it was freaking awesome, okay? Also, for the first time, this new generation would be the first generation of Chevy truck to be tested in a wind tunnel for aerodynamics and fuel efficiency. This testing is ultimately what resulted in a very square body, but sweeping design that helped the new Silverado glide through the air instead of cut it, making it more fuel efficient than the previous generations of Silverados before it. Well, a lot changed over the next 45 years between engines and transmissions and body styling. One thing that would stay the same was the square wheel well design. In a lot of ways, this became almost iconic for General Motors, being both the butt of many jokes by the Ram and Ford guys who could fit 35 on 12 and a half on a 12 wide on a relatively stock truck, but it also became a design pillar when it came to exterior styling of the GM trucks. So much so that when General Motors decided to change their truck design in 2019 and eliminate the square wheel wells, people lost their god Mine. Do you remember the first time you saw a new body style Silverado in the wild? Because I do, and I remember how much I hated it because it wasn't square like all the rest of them. If you're like me and you're truck sitting on jack stands right now, and you need to get your wheels and tires mounted and balanced, just head to customoutsets.com. We got free mounting, balancing, and shipping to lower 48 states, plus as low as 0% APR financing if you're looking to get your build started now to get it ready before show season. Check it out. It was like we were brainwashed to think that wheel walls had to be square even though we wanted them to be round. Tell us your invasion plans, and don't bother taking over my mind. 
And it seems that this was a common theme across the board when it comes to the new body style trucks. I wasn't the only guy that initially just didn't like them when I saw them. Fun fact for you here, when asked about the new redesign, Rick Shear, the lead exterior designer for the 2019 Silverado, stated the reason the square wheel wells didn't make it to the new body style was quite simply aerodynamics. So the reason in the 70s that we got them was aerodynamics, and the reason in 2019 that they disappeared is because of aerodynamics. Oh, how the turn tides have tabled, my friends. <laughs> But here's why we really hate square wheel wells, and I can say that because I have one, and I, they're okay, but listen, they're a pain in the ass. If you're a truck guy or gal like us, then chances are that you can't leave anything stock. Perhaps one of the biggest first mods that I do to pretty much any vehicle I own is new wheels and new tires, and usually they're bigger and wider than the factory setup. Now, sure, right, there's some flexibility if you're, gonna leave your truck stock height and you have square wheel wells, but let's be honest here. Those square wheel wells, they really suck to fit anything bigger than a nine wide into. This is because where most round wheel wells give you that room on the back side of the wheel well or the front side of the cab, you know, depending on if that's how you wanna spin it. Square wheel wells are about three inches more forward and then they square off and you know, all of that material in there adds up to the unfortunate fact that chances are it's gonna rub. To combat this, the guys up in Northern California started hacking out pinch welds. They trimmed back material and otherwise they just straight up attacked their fenders with grinders to do with what we like to call the NorCal mod. Now, this NorCal mod works by cutting back the pinch weld, rolling the material forward with a hammer and then just overall making yourself more room for bigger wheels and tires in that wheel well so you don't have to rub every time you put the truck in reverse. If you're not gung-ho on attacking your truck with a grinder and a big hammer though, you still have a few options. If you're looking to clear 12 wide and you don't want to do any metal trimming, you're going to be looking at a six inch lift kit or larger. This is going to get the body of the truck up high enough that you really won't have to worry about those bigger tires on those 12 wides coming back and wrinkling your fender or rubbing on the front side of the fender there. And it, sure, it may not give you that stuffed wheel and tire look that some guys are after, but it is gonna get you going on some 12 wides while still retaining that factory fender shape. And if you wanna use factory fender flares here, you can do that as well. Would you guys NorCal mod your truck? Drop a comment down below and let us know. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With that, I'm Dustin with Custom Offsets. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.